I first of all, I want to just say thank you. Um, about a month ago, I probably wouldn't uh, have expected to be even visiting a church. Um, I believe that I was following the Lord in December. Some things happened. I felt I was in the center of God's will. And, uh, you know, we don't understand God's ways. We just have to keep on doing what we know is right and trust Him. But even a month ago, I felt like I was just doing exactly what God wanted me to do, and He slammed a door in my face. I said, no, this is not the direction you need to go. It's been hard, very hard. And um, that following Sunday when the door closed, I still knew I needed to be in church. Regardless of how I was feeling, I still needed to be in church. And I was looking for a church to attend, to visit. Uh, I wanted a church that just didn't prefer the King James Bible. Amen. I wanted a church that held, held to the King James Bible. Amen. And that was one of the reasons why I visited here. But I want to thank you as a church for being open. It is hard to go someplace new, not knowing anybody. And, of course, I know the Condons, and that was... That helped to me, but uh, to walk in doors not knowing what you're going to expect. And you've been friendly, not only to myself, but to my children, and I appreciate that very much. So I want to thank you as a church uh, for what you've done. Um, I also want you to understand you've got something special here. I, wanted to, I hope you don't take it for granted. You have something special. You have a pastor that loves you, that preaches the word. There's a lot of preachers that don't preach the whole word they like to water down whatever and I'm not going to get into that because I want to hear a message today but I do want to get into my testimony we went out to Lebanon last week and I enjoyed the service uh, great message and it was just a good time of fellowship and I do enjoy it, it was a blessing to me as well um, but the pastor asked me to give my testimony um, and even though I'm nervous but I also think you always ought to be ready to give your testimony. So I was raised in church all my life. Um, my mom and dad were very active in church. In fact, my dad did things with puppets. I talked to pastor about that. And he actually used to go to apartment complexes and, and housing developments in the Rochester, New York area. And he had a stage that he had created. And they'd have a puppet show, and then he'd preach the gospel and get ch children saved, adults saved, then he try and get them to come to church the following Sunday. So my, my mom and dad were very active in church, so I grew up in church all my life. Um, because they were very active and they had a heart for the Lord, I had a heart for the Lord as well. And I, I thought I was saved as a young child. I surrendered, probably about thir when I was 13 or 14, I surrendered my life to the Lord. And by the way, I think, you know, everybody... You know, you may still be a business, you may still have your own a job that you go to, but I think we ought to surrender our lives to the Lord. Jesus Christ should be the center of our life, not just a part of it. So as a teenager, I surrendered my life to the Lord, whatever you'd want, but I still had my own dreams, things that I wanted to do. But then later on, probably about, uh, I was about 15, I was hearing a preacher preach a message, and God convicted my heart. And I surrendered to preach. Now, a very hard thing for me, do I fought for, for about a year. And uh, I finally said, you know what, Lord, whatever you want, I'm tired of fighting. I raised that white flag, whatever you want, Lord, I'll, I'll do. And uh, went off to Bible college. But it was about my junior year of college. And by the way, throughout the, the, the course, I can't give you times, I can't give you dates. But whenever I heard a message on salvation... Something inside of me would just prick my heart. I started getting a little nervous. So I remember one time I asked my parents, and they said, no, when, when, you're, when you're younger, you, you, you accept the Lord. But I couldn't remember anything about it. Brother Dan, I couldn't remember kneeling, praying in front of a bed. I couldn't remember them talking to me about it. But I kept on going off of what my parents told me. You know, I just, if they said I'm saved, I'm saved. My junior year of college... Um, I was working in an evening college chapel service. I shouldn't have even been there because evening college chapel was a small room just like this. 
And uh, it was very limited. So the only ones that could attend the chapel services at, on e at evening college were the ones that actually went to evening college. And most of them were married men. Single guys could not go to evening, could not attend evening college. So just basically mo mostly married men, preacher boys, and their wives. And I remember I was working security, and they needed some extra help. And the, the captain said, do you want to just work the PA booth? I'll give you some extra money. It'll help me out because I, I have a need. So I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'll, I'll do that. I, I could use the extra money. And on September 12th, 1996, a preacher preached that night in Eden College on the reality of hell and how some people, even at that college, even in that auditorium, were going to die and go to hell. He used the, the, uh, the verse about the, the wolf in sheep's clothing. But he talked about how people that feel they're saved, maybe they're brought up in church all their life and they felt they were saved, were still going to die and go to hell because they truly weren't saved. Yeah. And the Lord started pricking my heart again. And I kept on thinking about, well, my parents told me I was saved. And I remember the Holy Spirit used that message and that preacher said, and some of you sitting in this room tonight, are going off of your parents' testimony. Some of you are just going off the fact that they tell you you're saved, but you're truly not saved. And it was like that finger of God, it was the Holy Spirit, said, you know what? That excuse you've been given for the past several years, I just shot it down. And I, my heart was broken. I realized right then and there that I wasn't saved. I didn't wait for the invitation. I was back there in the PA booth. I just bowed my head. And I asked Jesus to save me, forgive me my sins. I accepted what he would do for me on the cross. I knew what I needed to do. She said I'd never done it. And I'm thankful today. I'm truly blessed. And we are, we're all blessed. I don't deserve heaven. I deserve to split hell wide open, to be honest with you. But we're all truly blessed. But I'm thankful today for some parents that loved me enough to bring me to church. Amen. And young people, if you're in here today, you ought to be thankful to your parents for bringing you to church, for loving you enough to get you into the house of God. I'm thankful today for a pastor. You know, that preacher, he could have said, you know, God, I don't know why you'd want me to preach a salvation message. These are all preacher boys. Let me preach this other message. But that preacher, I believe, listened to the Holy Spirit. And I'm thankful for a man of God that said, you know what, I'm not going to worry about what I want to do. I'm going to do exactly what the Holy Spirit is leading me to do. And I'm thankful for a Savior. Amen. Even though I wasn't looking, I thought I was all right. He loved me enough that he came to me. And I'm thankful that he loves me today. I'm thankful that that night I was there to hear the message and be able to be saved. And today, there is no doubt in my mind, I can tell you that on September 12th, 1996, I accepted Jesus as my Savior. September 15th, I got baptized, because you get baptized after you're saved. And I had to swallow a lot of pride, to be honest with you, because, you know, I was, had to come up in front, but you know, I knew I needed to be baptized. So I'm thankful today for what Jesus has done for me. And you know, if you're here today, you know, eternity isn't anything to mess with. And I'm not trying to scare anybody. But if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I want to leave these doors without knowing for sure where you're going to spend eternity. We don't know how much time we have left. I could walk out in this parking lot today and fall over with a heart attack. I could be working my job and something happened and something could happen to me. I don't know what's in store for me, but I do know this, that I am saved and I'll spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. And I, I encourage you, if you're not here today and you're not saved, don't leave here without knowing for sure. Thank you.